In this video, I'm gonna show you how to carve out your spot in the coffee industry. There are thousands of coffee houses out there. Is it too saturated to start a coffee house? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to differentiate yourself from all the thousands out there so that you get your loyal fans, create a business, and make an impact in your community. So let's get started. So if I'm telling you it's not saturated and you can carve your spot out, how do you do that? Well, you as an owner operator have a fingerprint. You have values and beliefs and the way of doing business that's gonna be different than everybody else. So lean into that. Everybody is thinking that, am I worth it? Can I make this happen? You can, you have all your experiences that have brought you to this place that creates your fingerprint. Nobody has your story. Nobody has what you have to bring to the table. It's uniquely yours. For me, my story, my fingerprint, I was working with the church out in Portland, Oregon, and I fell in love with coffee. And I saw that, man, there's community out there. And when we moved back to Nashville, I was like, well, what do we do? Do we go back into the church with walls or do we just love on people in our community? So we decided to love on our people in the community by starting a coffee house. It wasn't a Christian coffee house per se, not really into that, but it was a coffee house. That's my fingerprint. I, I come from working with people, was a youth minister. So I'm into the experience of things. I want it to be fun. I want it to be experience. And so even with staff meetings, it almost feels like youth group because we do that kind of cool stuff, right? So that's your fingerprint. That's my thing. Also me, I'm married and I've got kids. So, you know, before when I started, I tried to separate that out. I tried to take my whole story. I didn't even, I didn't even get into it. I, I, I took my family and they were doing something else and I was doing the coffee business and we were on two separate paths. So when I restarted and I realized, look, that's part of my story, it, it became the family business. And so all of, the, all of the family's involved with this. And what's happened with that? Because I've leaned into that story and my unique situation, great amount of success and it's so much more fulfilling and fun because I'm not trying to separate myself from the equation. So you have that. You have your story. Lean into it. What, why are you unique? What are you bringing to the table? Well, you have something to give the world. And if you're going to use a coffee house as the, the canvas in which you're going to paint this art piece, the coffee house is your canvas. And so you've got to put your fingerprint, your mark on it. You're the creator of it. So put your mark on it. Don't shy away from this. Don't shy away from your fingerprint, from your story, your unique situation, what you bring to the table. Second thing you're gonna differentiate yourself is, is more practical and that's your menu. Our coffee house is more traditional. So we just have traditional drinks. We don't have a lot of frou-frou drinks. We only have a couple different kinds of syrups and flavors. And so it's very simple, but you may not be that way. Maybe you wanna have something that's just like crazy and it's just like all kinds of flavors and 31 flavors like Baskin Robbins or whatever like that. Maybe you have like some special preparations, but anyway, that's your menu. What are you going to be known for? So when people come in, uh, we have even people come in from other coffee houses, other coffee house owners. And I say, what do you think? And they're like, wow, this is really like traditional. I say, yeah, that's who we are. We're like a traditional people, traditional family making traditional coffee. And that's what we're into. So our menu differentiates us. So what about our products? Well, I'm gonna jump down here. Simple is better than complicated. And that, that really is, that goes for menu, products, aesthetic, and your preparation, right? This is kind of like, always go simple, less is always more. So when I, I put that to our product, what, how many mini, how many mini SKUs do we have? 35 maybe? Yeah. Like 35, and that includes all of our bakery items too, right? So we have a very simple menu in our products. Now, what about a products that, how do you differentiate within the products? Well, we like to take our, the components of the products or the constituents of the products and then make those really special. So our coffee, we roast our own coffee. It's very fresh. That's a component of our product. Our chocolate, we use a Dutch processed chocolate. We make our own chocolate sauce out of that and raw sugar. That's a constituent of our product. It's really important, right? That's how we differentiate ourselves. We don't have a lot of flavors. You can get vanilla, you can get caramel, and you can get hazelnut, that's it. So we've, people are like, well, you should get watermelon. No, we're not gonna get watermelon. What about raspberry? No, I'm not gonna get raspberry either. No, I used to do that because I thought I had to be everything to everyone, but I wasn't differentiating myself because 
I, I, I couldn't take my products. What's really important with this products is that you have products that can stand alone. That people go, dude, that is, that is the absolute best latte I have ever had. Or this is the comment that I really like. That latte reminds me of when I was in Italy or that cappuccino reminds me of when I was in Italy and wow. True story. True story, right? Or, no or I, love, I love when they say, and, and, well, why am I saying that? I'm not trying to gloat, I'm not trying to brag. I'm saying that your house is built from wood and bricks and nails and all of that kind of stuff. It's the constituents of the house. If you use really good ingredients, and then you take those really good ingredients, you can make really good products with those. And those products need to stand alone on their own. And they should be able to where a person blind taste test or blind kind of situation, they go like, that's really, really good. That's really good. And so there's a way to do that. Each one of your products needs to stand alone. Your mocha needs to stand alone. Your latte needs to stand alone. Cappuccino needs to stand alone. But each one of those needs to be the very best that you can produce. Because you're doing that at such a high level, your menu is going to be simple, not complicated. See how that works? Okay. Interesting story. There was a baker in town, and uh, we were working with them. And they, had, they came in, and they were talking about their products. And then I had a customer come in to buy some bread from them. And this person, for some reason, the customer asked, so tell me about the salt. Like I'm looking, I've researched a lot of salt, you know, mineral salts and sea salts and the mineral content of that. So what kind of salt do you use? And this baker, not understanding this, said, oh, whatever I could get at Walmart, the cheapest stuff I could get at Walmart. The baker left when she was out of hearing. The customer looked at me and says, I'll never, I'll never buy her bread. Now why? Why did the customer say that? It wasn't because the, the customer was just being so nitpicky about the salt, but she communicated through her product and the constituent of her product or how her product was being made that she didn't really care what went into it. She didn't really care. And so you can differentiate yourself by just the products that you use and the, the, the supplies that you use to make your products are of high quality. So we use raw sugar. We use all, raw sugar for all of our chocolate. We make our own chocolate. We didn't even tell people that. And we were like, well, maybe we should tell people that. When you hear that, they're like, oh, okay, that's why it tastes so good. Yeah, it tastes really good because we care about what's going into it. Now that seems like common sense, but understand you're doing this intentionally. All right, the one, two, three, fourth thing, the aesthetic. You're gonna differentiate yourself by your aesthetic possibly theme. So Beck's Farmhouse Coffee, we have a farmhouse over here that we used to live in. That's where we came up with the name. It actually means something. And so we have this very simple farmhouse vibe, right? Now you can do two things. You can do subtle or you can do over the top. If it's subtle, which we, I think is simple versus complicated, then subtle is more like cues or clues of farmhouse, right? We have mason jars that we use, right? because they're the best thing to store stuff in. They're awesome. It helps us in our business process, but it also speaks to the farmhouse, right? We could go over the top, and when you walked in the door, you could, we could have a recording of a uh, rooster, you know, in the morning, cock doodle doo We could do that and over the top. I don't think it would work really well, but the aesthetic would be the same. You could separate yourself. So think about your aesthetic and your theme and it needs to be subtle, but it needs to be congruent all the way through. If it's gonna be mis mismatched and uh, eclectic, then it needs to be that. If it's gonna be clean and minimalist, it needs to be that. It needs to be congruent all the way through, right? It doesn't make sense to be like, okay, confusing. So aesthetic, preparation. One, two, three, four. Your fifth thing is preparation. You can separate yourself by preparation of your coffee. And I think this is really important. Our preparation is very simple, but very traditional. So I'm not really looking for trends, even our roasting style. I'm not saying this is the best, this is what we do. You have your fingerprint and your story, right? It's gonna follow that. But for us, we're simple, traditional. We do a traditional preparation. Our espresso, our coffees are traditionally prepared. So if someone asks us for like a macchiato, we do a traditional macchiato. We don't do a Starbucks macchiato. Macchiato means marked. Right, so we do a more traditional thing and that's how we separate ourselves, right? We separate ourselves just by our preparation. 
We don't have many ingredients in our preparation. It's very consistent. And so all of these things work together to separate you and make you different, set you apart from the crowd. And it's very important because again, this is your blank canvas. Your coffee house is your blank canvas to the world on what you value and what is important to you. Along with that, I don't wanna forget your non-negotiables. This also separates you, right? Excellence, honesty, kindness, care, right? What's important to you? Those things will also make you different and set you apart. All right, that's the video for today. Think about your situation, what your story is. Make yourself different, stand out. Don't contrive something. Don't make something up. Make it congruent and integrous with you, but it's your job to make that happen, all right? So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.